Hey, what's up? I am Michelle B. This is Channel Nerds, a channel dedicated to helping YouTubers that educate and inspire to grow on YouTube. And in this video, I want to walk you through my own process of creating a media kit. You know when you get an email from a brand and they ask you, what rates do you charge? And you feel a bit awkward and you don't really have anything set in stone. And then you send something back and you feel a bit unprofessional. A media kit kind of resolves that problem. So a media kit contains all the information that a brand could want about your channel, as well as your rates for sponsored videos. So a media kit is something that I have created in the past, but I just never really used it. In this video, I wanted to create a brand new media kit for my main channel, Michelle B, and I wanted to bring you guys along with my creation process. So to create my media kit, I used Canva. I'm not sponsored. Canva is just a really great tool. I would actually usually use my Photoshop alternative, which is called Affinity Photo, if any of you are interested. However, I wanted to make this video so that you guys could follow along and do the same thing for free. So they have a whole bunch of media kit templates, which made things a lot easier. I just chose one of those. And then on the side, I also did a lot of Googling for media kits, basically to get some inspiration for what I wanted to put in my media kit and how I wanted everything to look. At the very top, I included my stats. So I only included stats for Instagram and YouTube because those are the only platforms I'd actually want to work with the brand on. I included a little bit about the channel. So this kind of summarizes what my channel's about, who I'm reaching out to, the kind of videos that I make. I decided that it was really important to have a visitor profile. This is information that brands have asked me for before and usually I just send them a screenshot of my analytics. So I talked about the age range of my visitors and now that I'm looking at this, visitors should read subscriber. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but I included the age range because my age range is actually quite large. I think most people would have thought it was on the younger side. However, there are people that are from 25 to 34 that hang around on my main channel a lot. I also looked at the top countries that my subscribers reside in. So my main subscriber base is actually the United States and the UK. Australia is third on the list, which is really sad. I need more Australian subscribers. It's an important thing for brands because if their main subscriber base is United States, they want to be able to align with your main subscriber base in the United States. Or what Whatever countries you're working with. I included a 28 day channel profile. So this is fully taken from my analytics and I only use 28 days because that was one of the options on the drop down. It just goes into depth about the analytics of my channel for the last 28 days. So the analytics that I looked at that I know brands would care about were um, how many minutes watch. It sounds impressive. 1.4 million. Um, how many views I received in the last 30 days, how many new subscribers I've gotten, which is important because it shows that my brand is still growing, my channel's still growing, people are still watching my videos, how many shares and how many likes, which kind of shows just the popularity of my content. I also showed my past collaborations. So on there I have Skillshare, I have Blinkist and I have BetterHelp. Um, another thing that I'm doing is actually getting in touch with these brands and asking them sort of the success rates of their campaigns with me because I've had quite a few repeat brands Brands. So Skillshare, they've come back to me a few times and I'm now on contract with them. So I assume that the numbers that I'm getting them are quite good. Being able to have that on my media kit will make my channel look more appealing to brands. And same thing with Blinkist, BetterHelp is a new one that I haven't worked with before, so I won't do that for them. Especially where you can feature well-known brands that you've worked with, I think it makes a company feel a bit more safe working with you when they can see those logos that they recognize. Of course, if you haven't had any past collaborations, you can skip out on this section all the same. And last but not least is collaboration packages. So this is where you can sort of help yourself by having a set price for your collaborations. And you can have even tiered collaboration packages. So so you can upsell brands by offering um, an Instagram post or if you have a blog on the side you could offer a blog post as well or links in the next four video descriptions. You can get creative with your collaboration packages. I made a whole video on how to determine what price points you'd want to charge for a collaboration video um, so I will link that in the description below and up here. So you can feature that on your media kit. So that was my process of creating a media kit for myself. This is something that I know will be so helpful to me when brands contact me and they say, what do you charge? I can send this over. Not only does it state your rates, but it also gives background around why you're charging the rates that you're charging if you're charging higher rates. So it shows all the statistics. It can show a bit of an idea of who your subscribers are and just make your channel look more appealing to work with. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe 
subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you liked this video, you will probably like my video on how to decide what to charge brands when you work with them. It will be linked on the screen and down below. I appreciate you guys so much. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon.